Welcome to Hardware Asylum. In a previous video, I showed you my Hercules 3D Profit 3 TI200. It is an AGB card using the NVIDIA GeForce 3 TI200 GPU. This Hercules 3D Profit 3 TI200 suffered from some bulging caps, so I picked up some replacements and decided to swap them out. Technically, the card worked perfectly, but I needed some practice before I attempted to recap my Soltec SL75 DRV4. And in retrospect, it's a good thing I did. Sadly, this card fought me the entire way, and I can attribute that to the large power planes used to deliver power to where it needs to go. Unfortunately, when you have a bunch of copper on the PCB, it tends to absorb heat, making it extremely difficult to get solder to melt. As a result, I ended up having to remove the capacitors manually by pulling them through the PCB using an old trick of melting the solder and using force. From there, I spent several hours attempting to clear the vias only to damage the board in the process. Lucky for me, Hercules designed this PCB to support both through hole and surface mount components. So instead of using the holes on the PCB, I decided to sprawl out the legs on my new capacitors and surface solder them in place. It took a while, but after the board heated up, I was able to get the caps soldered down. And from there, I did a quick continuity test and proceeded to do a smoke test. And you know, everything checked out. While doing some stress tests, I got the crazy idea to test the performance against some of the other cards in my collection, just to see how good and or bad the GeForce 3 TI200 really was. The cards I will be testing are from my private collection, and they include the Hercules 3D Profit 3, the Hercules 3D Profit 3 TI200, the card I just repaired, the Hercules 3D Profit 2 Ultra, the 3DFX Voodoo 3, and the Diamond Viper V770 Ultra TNT2. The complete system is comprised of an AMD K62 475 Plus. We have that clocked at 500 megahertz. That's sitting on the DFI P5B V3 Plus Super Socket 7 motherboard using the VIA MP3 chipset. A total of 384 megs of RAM is installed and will be running Windows 98 SE. The first card I will be testing is my Diamond Viper V770 Ultra. One of the reasons I upgraded this card was due to the bad bearings in the cooling fan. The cooler on this particular card is a clone of what they put on the GeForce 256. Basically four screws, fan in the middle, and then the heatsink is bonded to the chip. Not an easy thing to repair unless you're able to find a replacement fan. Now I found this one on eBay. Looks like it would fit, same profile, same basic configuration, however it's a little too big. And then I was able to find this. This is a replacement heatsink. We compare the two heatsinks together. You can see that they are basically the same size, same configuration. It even has the same plug, although the wire is a different length. I'm sure we can work with that. I should be able to just pull the fan off of this heatsink and put it on here. Not the prettiest tail repair, but we basically just added the lead from our diamond fan to our new fan. So, we go ahead and just install the fan. And there we go. I'll grab a hair dryer and swap the stickers over a little bit later, but we can try this out now. Thank you. 
Oh yes, much better. Quiet and restored. Starting with 3D Mark 99, we have a nearly flat chart across the board with only the Prophet 2 Ultra posting a higher score. I'd like to believe that we are bottlenecked by our 500 megahertz K62. However, the charts do paint the correct picture. TNT2 Ultra and Voodoo 3 were competitors while the Prophet 3 card was always slightly faster than the TI-200. Next we have 3D Mark 2000. Here's another situation where we could have gotten better performance with a faster system, but the purpose of the benchmark is to illustrate DirectX performance across new and aging cards. 3D Mark 2001 SE was a popular benchmark on HardwareBot, mostly due to how difficult it was to tune the subsystem for the best performance. However, on retro machines, it draws a line between cards supporting DirectX 8 features and everyone else. Finally, we have a true OpenGL benchmark, GL Quake. This game would have been quite old by the GeForce 3 era, but it works as a performance benchmark to a certain degree. As expected, the Prophet 2 Ultra was the fastest, following by the Prophet 3 and the TI-200. Voodoo 3 was a respectable third, with the TNT Ultra bringing up at the rear. Funny story, I bought the TNT Ultra specifically to play Quake based on some online reviews and apparently bad information. Ironically, this was also one reason that I started doing reviews to begin with. Of the cards I tested, the GeForce 3 is really the one that you should pick. Sure, there are some valid reasons for going with 3D effects and for a pure retro gaming PC, I wouldn't have it any other way. However, in my opinion, the last great Voodoo card was the Voodoo 2 and from there on, it was Nvidia all the way. I've told a story on the Hardware Asylum podcast about how I got duped into picking up a GeForce 3. As the story goes, I paid $525 US for the awesome Hercules Prophet 2 Ultra. It was a great card and worked extremely well with my GeForce 2 MX to create a dual monitor desktop. When the GeForce 3 was released, a good friend of mine said I needed to take it back to CompUSA and use their hardware warranty to get a free GeForce 3 card. He was even able to get the difference and cost refunded back to him, so I decided to give it a try. Long story short, I didn't get a refund, and a CompUSA tech had already ripped the heat sinks off of my card before the deal was actually complete, so angrily I accepted the new Hercules Prophet 3, and when I got home, the drivers refused to work with my GeForce 2 MX, breaking my dual monitor setup. The icing on the cake was that games were actually slower, and at the time, none of the existing games supported any of the new DirectX features, thus fulfilling the early adoption prophecy. While I like to hold a grudge about my experience, the truth of the matter is for a retro gaming machine, it would be stupid to use anything older than GeForce 3 on any system supporting AGP. You'll get better experience in games, you'll get to play more games, and generally have a much better time playing them. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.